All right, guys. We've been working for an entire week on this scrappy build process, and my identical twin brother, Mark, has been right there being my sounding board. We haven't even kit. lifted a tool yet, and I feel like my brain's melted. Yeah, <laughs> mine's always melted. <laughs> so we, what we've got going is we've got scrappy, and we're ready to actually today cut something. That's the goal. But we've got an entire week. All we've done is math. Mark has built amazing aircraft right alongside me all these years, and they are unreal. We've set records together, formation flights together. We've done all kinds of radical things. But we're identical twins. How similar are our planes? The, the more we ran numbers, the more we diverted in path. I mean, it's, it's almost insane. You, you can't build an, a perfect airplane. You can only build a perfect airplane for your personal mission. And Mike has an idea for Scrappy, and I was gonna build the identical twin to Scrappy. Maybe Scrappy 2, we could have called them Pete and repeat. <laughs> but the more we ran the math, I wanted to go another direction. And Mike is doing Mike. It's a different direction. The same idea of what you can do with a, a Cub in the backcountry on a reasonable budget, and uh, they're totally different aircraft. So you want to run upstairs and we'll draw some pictures? I think we need a whiteboard. <laughs> a whiteboard? <laughs> and we're going to go show you the, the madness that is the two of us. <laughs> Let's talk about where we diverted. We both said, let's build radical planes. We compete in stole competitions, and we compete in the new stole drag races. We've done that for years. There's, there's lots of ways to go about this. You can, for stole drag, you want lightweight, high horsepower. For a, a stole competition, you want as light as you can go, big, huge wing. As we kept doing math, our planes diverged further and further. So, Mark is gonna stay more traditional cub, but definitely not traditional in the fact that Mark is putting a massive six cylinder, high horsepower, 300 plus horsepower motor in his cub. I want a six cylinder motor in my cub and I still want to sit in the front seat. Mike wants to put horsepower in his cub and he's okay with sitting in the back seat. So for me, I gotta have the lightest six cylinder motor I can have. So I'm gonna be a parallel valve a Lycoming 540. The parallel valve's a lot less weight than the angle valve um, in every way, the case, the crank, counterweights. There's only so much horsepower you can get out of it. Mike, you're going with angle valve. Angle valve. That's a heavy motor. It's a heavy motor. And then, Mark's going for 300 horsepower. I'm gonna go for a whole lot more. 300-ish. <laughs> Three, 320. I'm gonna go 300 and something dumb. So um, I'm gonna give up prop. Mark's gonna do a fixed pitch prop. I'm gonna do adjustable prop. Mark's going for super lightweight. I'm going for sacrifice more weight for lots of horsepower. Mark is gonna be able to sit in the front seat. I gotta sit in the back seat. So we did simple math to play with really basic concepts. If we put a big motor in the front, I could fix it and sit up front by putting a great big weight back in the back. Now let me tell you, there's several downsides. We put that weight back there. In flight, it feels good. On the ground, if you look down at an aircraft, we got another problem. This is my wing, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my wing. Here's my spinny thing up front. Um, if I put a giant motor here, Mark or I, and we counter it with weight back here, we can get the weight and balance in line. Here's the problem, and we see this with a lot of planes that have been built. It works, but when you land a tail dragger, you got a set of wheels right up here, and you start to get sideways, and this plane starts to move, and it's called a ground loop. This plane can start to move one way or the other. Now, if you only move it a foot, no big deal. This little brake over here, hit this brake, you can stop that, mo that mass in motion. However, the heavier this is, and the heavier this is, this pivots this way, this pivots this way, the further you move that mass away from this center point, and it starts to move, the fulcrum way back here and up here is trying to be stopped by an object that's only four, three to four feet out, and you can't get it stopped. And the further this plane swings, 
the more aggravated it gets and the less ability you have to stop it. So what we did is we did math. At three feet per second, it's not that hard to stop it. Get five, six, seven feet per second, almost impossible. Add weight to it, never gonna happen. You can't recover the ground loop. So we need to fix it. What are we doing to fix it, Mark? When we're trying to put a big old six cylinder up here, you can't just put that there and shift batteries and stuff back here. Like Mike says, it flies good. But so the goal is to pull that weight back as far as we can so that we don't have to add weight here. Pull it all really, really tight. So that's the key thing is take all the weight and pull it in as much as you can here so you're not doing what we'd call the lazy mode is just a battery in the back. What I found is I'm gonna be heavy enough here. I don't want the weight in the back. I'm moving myself back. There's only one way to correct it. I need to adjust my gear out. So that's what Mark is saying. We're gonna move my gear out further. It gives me more distance from my pivoting mass. That same braking effect here will help stop that. And we can do that math and I can know I have more mass, more mass in motion, but more leverage to stop that mass. I hope that makes sense. But my gear has got to go wider, which adds a little more weight. Now let's talk about that weight a little bit further. The other impact with weight, of course, is how the airplane handles and flies. I love how my Carbon Cub flies. My Cub sits in at competition weight at 996 pounds. I love that feel. It's light, it's responsive, it's just fun. And so I wanted to keep that. So if I'm adding roughly 150 pounds of motor, I've got to increase my wing. I just want to get in and light and nimble and reacts more like if you're into motocross. You know what it feels like to be on a nice light little two stroke that you can throw around, no headlight, no starter versus a big thumper. There's nothing wrong with a big four stroke. It's just heavy, it's powerful, but you just can't chuck it around the same. I like that carbon cub lightweight feel. And so I can help that a little bit with wing loading. So I'm going to extend my wings the amount I need to to get my wing loading with the new engine to match Cub Crafters wing loading. What we're gonna do, I need to get my gross weight up. I did the math, <laughs> I, I, had, I, I know the weight of my motor. I have the weight and I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get the math to work without doing something silly with putting the weight in the wrong spot. So Scrappy, mathematically, wasn't gonna fly the way I wanted it to fly or wouldn't stay as straight as I wanted it to stay. So to correct it, not only do I need a longer wing, like Mark is doing, I need to change the cord of my wing. This plus that, this. So I'm gonna build a new wing. Though it is heavier, I'm adding. Mike's always been a little heavier. <laughs> Scrappy, we're gonna make a lot of parts. So I don't have gear. My gear is gonna go way forward. And I'm gonna make it so that my tail's heavier. By moving my tire way forward on Scrappy, I'll be able to hit the brakes harder, similar to Draco, and I won't have reverse. Dra <laughs> Draco, depending on the surface, sometimes Mike will land with the brakes on, just leave them on, tire skidding through the grass. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, and then huck it in reverse. And then throw it in reverse. So I'm moving my gear forward so I can hit the brakes harder. So my gear is going forward, and uh, he has to stay more conventional. So this is traditional cub gear. When the gear moves up, this pulls apart. This shock has about 3.95 inches of movement, which gives out here a total movement of approximately 10 inches, which is awesome. That is a great gear. Um, Draco, if you were to watch it land, it has 15 plus inches of movement. It kind of helps fix up all my bad landings because it just sucks it up. So I want to try and go a little more aggressive since I'm building all my own gear and out of scrap parts. And so I'm designing a new gear and I want to lose this metal work down here. It's called the Cabane V because it's wind drag. And I want to lose these shocks because they're round because they're drag. And my personal opinion is it's the absolute best way to go the way they're doing it right now. This, this it's gear is so lightweight. It's super so, lightweight, conventional so, gear. I've got to, I'm sticking with that because for me, every ounce counts. It's just, <laughs> I just want to try something two different. different, two different ways to do it right. There's another type of shot 
shock you can do. It's like uh, it's done on a storch. One of our great friends, Tim Howes, the our stud. Um, he's got a storch. His shock is mounted more like this down on the gear. And its shock is compression. More like uh, on an automotive or uh, drag cars or everything. Uh, everything. Desert trucks, Baja trucks, everything's compression. The shock down here is a pulls, this compresses. The benefit to these shocks is they'll have massive movements depending on the shock. The only limiting factor being, you know, the prop, the prop, big, the prop big spinny, hitting the ground. The big spinny thing can't hit the ground. The benefits, more travel. More options. More options, more adjustability, more tuning. The downside, that's a big long pipe in the wind. So usually it's just done on extreme backcountry bush planes that are flying so slow that that wind drag doesn't affect it much. So that's the other method it's done. I'm gonna do something very different. I don't even know if it's gonna work. I think it will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carry this suspension into the aircraft and make a truss web. And inside the airplane, I am putting shocks inside the aircraft. So I have nothing outside the airplane. So I'm gonna do more like a Baja desert truck type suspension. I think Mike envisions himself through the whoop de doos in an airplane and uh, <laughs> soaking it up. And I envision myself flying lightly in the wind next to him, <laughs> watching. The suspension's going into the airframe. I've been working all that on all that geometry on the computer. It has not been easy. I still haven't made a part, but I actually have all this geometry done. So if I bottom out my travel, which means my travel has more down motion. So by widening my suspension and giving it a wider stance, I help adjust my over center pivot for a ground loop prevention. I also change how much movement of scrub. The scrub is the movement when it touches down to pivoting out how much distance that tire has to scrape outward across the ground. And there isn't a right or wrong here. This is two people wanting to do it their way. And when you're building your airplane, do it your way. Forget about what people say online because for every million pilots, there's a million ideas on how they would do it. Do it the way you want to do it. Yeah. But for weight, I'm just sitting here, I'm thinking of my rib. I, at um, uh, two years ago at the High Sierra Fly-In, I knew I was going to be going up against Steve Henry. I've been watching him race. He's, Steve's amazing. And so for that last race, I was so worried about weight. I'd already taken all the fuel out of the plane I could. I took out anything that wasn't physically welded to the plane. I stripped out of the plane. And I fired up the plane to go to the line, and I looked back, and I saw that my baseball cap was in the back of the plane. And I literally panicked because that's so much weight that I <laughs> shut down my engine, I undid my seat belts, and I dove to the back of the plane because I couldn't reach it. And when I dove to try to get that out, I landed right here on my ribs and broke my rib. And I heard it <laughs> pop, and the pain was so bad, I'm like, oh my heck, gosh dang it, I just broke my rib for a hat. I threw that in the dirt and went out and, and raced Steve Henry. And it might have made a difference because you guys were... It, that close. It was so close. And so, like, I, you could say, I have busted a rib literally for ounces. ounces. That's, that's, that's what it means to me. All right, guys. So, let's sum this up. The things I love about Mark's airplane. Less complex motor. I'm going to have a bit more ponies, but I'm going to be paying for it. His is lighter weight, lighter weight gear, more conventional, less trial. He's going to have lighter feel. Um, it's going to be a tried and true carbon cub with a big giant motor. We are 100% sure Mark's plane is going to be awesome. So that's what I love about your plane. Um, Mike, Mike is never afraid to try something new. And by the end of this video, I'm sure 10 things on your airplane will have changed. And, <laughs> and found a way to make your wing bigger, to take the extra weight and still keep the wing loading where we want it to be for short field landings. I love horsepower. I mean, I know your horsepower to weight ratio is gonna be sick. Both of us are shooting for a horsepower to weight ratio to exceed Draco. That's a goal and that's a tall order. And there's no question you're gonna get it with your motor. I love that you're going after the suspension. I mean, because we've all had that landing where you're coming into a hillside that Surprises, surprises you. <laughs> surprises you. <laughs>
So uh, there's our two extreme builds. Baja Desert truck-ish extremes on all levels. And then and is large, light, super lightweight, six cylinder, balance. which seems ridiculous to even say, we're gonna try to build a lightweight six cylinder. So I hope you keep following Scrappy Build. We're gonna go start cutting Scrappy's frame up. This is the first time after a week of a lot of work, we actually know what we're building. We know where the wings gotta go, where the gears gotta go, where the suspension's gotta be, where the weight is. Everything's been recalculated. Now we get to go build something. So let's go cut up a frame and let's get to work. Before we build, we must destroy. <laughs> Let's do this right. Scrappy has officially begun. <laughs> Almost thinking about it. All right, we have a starting point. <laughs> I'm excited to cut a whole lot more off. What I've got to do to start, my engine doesn't fit in this airframe. The airplane isn't even wide enough for Scrappy to fit the engine I'm putting in it. So I've got to cut all the middle out of this, rebuild the bottom. Of course, it's bent here anyway from its crash. So I've got to rebuild this center section, the gear attach points for my new gear, we're gonna widen this airplane four inches a side. It's gonna be a pretty wide cub, but uh, that way the engine will fit. So, Scrappy has officially begun. All right, guys, <laughs> we've been bouncing ideas back and forth, Mark and I, forever. I'm so lucky to have my twin brother. I love you, Mark. He's the other half of the brain we divided at birth as twins. So it takes two of us and we just rattle things off and we get it there. I hope you guys have fun. I hope you follow along, like, subscribe, tell others to come see what we're doing. We got a lot of mad stuff coming, crazy things going on. I hope you have fun. Let's get back to work. <laughs>